All right, guys. Today we're gonna discuss the exercises most important to get strong. Destroy my body, protect my spirit. Can never shake me, no break me, baby. I'm fearless. Soon as you count me out, I make an appearance. Display the flow, that's the realest. Maintain my spot as the illest. I pillage your village. Cause I'm a cockerel, no need to write, bro. They project light from this for chakra. Boom, shaka laka. Look at the flow, I done conjured up. It ain't the dog in the fight, it's the fight in the dog, and I'm a mutt. So, in today's video, I'm gonna tell you the four main best ultimate fantastic exercises to get strong this is going to help you a lot in your life because people often think you know i, I want to be a good baseball player how do you train for strength for baseball or somebody maybe a basketball player and it's like you know how how can i jump higher what kind of st strength training should i do or then we have uh, maybe some golf players or some uh, i even see a lot of fighters doing some rotational movement you know because yeah because if I punch like this, then doing like functional, rotational band type of course, that's gonna really make me strong. Because pulling the bands in different direction is what really gets people strong, you know. With an exceptional bicep strength, you can train the pronation, you can train the abduction, adduction, like all sorts of isolated movement with the bands. Also, bands must be it, right? That must be the best. Thank you. No, no, that's not a fucking band. Some people might say, oh, I'm gonna do some bicep curls or do some bench press. Bench press gotta be the top, top of the food chain exercise for strength. Guess what? Also not correct. So basically, how do we get strong? We get strong by doing the exercises that make us strong. So those are the exercises that use the most amount of muscle mass. We train them specifically and lift more weight there. We want more force production, which is, means we get stronger. We get thicker joints, we get thicker bones, we get stronger muscles, bigger muscles, stronger core, everything is better. So which are the top four exercises for strength? And two of them are for upper body, two of them are for lower body strength, just so we're clear right away. So some of you might be really guessing, you know, it's not the bicep curl, it's not the bench press, so what is it? All right, so which one should we start with, legs or upper body? Start with legs. Start with legs, yeah, because we got all the calisthenics athletes completely uninterested <laughs> in legs. So let's start with legs. So pistol squats got to be the best thing, right? Now, jumping, great stuff for strength. Also not the best thing. Not a lot of force production. Standing on the bolster ball, right? That's got to do it. You're doing some squats on an unstable surface. That's got to create some stability, right? No, also fucking bullshit. All right, so uh, yeah, I've talked enough and postponed enough. The best exercise for lower body is the squat. Whoa, that's got to be surprising to hear, right? The squat, like really the squat? Yes, the squat is the best exercise. It involves the most amount of muscle mass where we can measure the amount of force we produce so the best thing to do is do it with a barbell which squat indeed front squat the back squat high bar squat low bar squat so low bar squat i would have to say to me personally because it engages more of the glutes and more of the lower back and more of the hamstrings than the high bar squat does so if we really want to be technically correct the squat that involves the most amount of muscle mass is the low bar squat so we replace the bar a little bit lower right here on the posterior deltoid, so just on the spine of the scapula, so a little bit lower, which allows us to have a greater lean in the bottom position and really use our hips and our hip drive to get out of there. So somebody tells you they got a strong lower body and then you get them under a barbell and they squat 60 kgs for three sets of five reps and that's heavy for them, their lower body is weak as shit. So if you're squatting below 100 kgs, your lower body is not very strong. If you're not squatting, yes, you're not very strong. You might be strong, but you would be stronger if you did some squats. So getting your squat plus 100 kgs is the best thing you can do for your lower body strength, health, your core stability, and your overall strength. Whether you're playing baseball or wanna kick the bag harder or wanna jump longer as a free runner or wanna be able to land from a greater height without damaging your back or your joints, you know, I did some shit like the seven meter backflip back in my days weighing 90 freaking kgs. Having a fucking heavy squat allowed me to do that shit without getting injured. So the squat is one of the fantastic four. The second one is similar to the squat, but it's the deadlift. So it's a little bit different mechanically, but that's the most important pattern that we got to do to 
pick shit up, which you got to do if you're if you're human. You, you got to pick up your baby. Maybe you're working somewhere. You got to pick up a, a box or something. You're maybe going to the woods and got to do some work. Like, I don't know, people these days probably not doing so much work, mainly sitting. But here on the, I live in Casinas, it's on a farm life. So a lot of people here are working. Everybody uses their lower back. And without learning how to pick stuff up, correctly and how to get stronger there you don't get get much chance of survival and you're not a very useful man around here if you can't fucking like deadlift 100 kgs not gonna explain how the deadlift is done but for beginners i really like to use romanian deadlift because you can use the range of motion that's that feels comfortable so you can basically start not by picking up the weight from the floor which might be quite tricky right now starting up from somewhere here you can use a kettlebell or even a plate or a barbell would be definitely preferable because then you can't move past this range. So this is very good. So again, slight anterior pelvic tilt, starting from here, lowering down, not letting the barbell here, engage the lat, keeping the lower back, the upper back tight. So right here, slight retraction, lower down as deep as you can and come back up, boom, boom. Again, something very useful. Start with low weight and deadlift is a bit more destructive than the squat. So squatting, I'm doing squats three times a week, three sets of five. Regarding the deadlift, one time a week, one set of five reps is enough. So yeah, those are the two lower body exercises that are the best. And then for the upper body, it's the bands, right? For the, <laughs> the bands, the bands gotta really, I hate to make fun of the bands. You know, I use them here, you know, they're here for, for my usual warm up. I do some stuff with the bands. For strength training, you gotta fucking not be serious if you're using the bands. All right, those are the two lower body exercises. So again, why do we choose the squat and the deadlift? Very simple, because they are the exercise that use the most amount of muscle mass. That makes sense. If you want to get stronger, you want to use it. And the same goes for hypertrophy. You want, if you want to get fucking bigger, you don't do that by isolating the, again, the abduction and the adduction and the flexion and the extension. And then we can use the flexion right here and supination, and then do some curls right here. And then you also gotta do the pronated curls, right? And you got all those things if you wanna get a good forearm, right? You gotta do 15 isolated exercises. Now, you gotta pick an exercise that involves the most amount of muscle mass and work on that. So if you're doing heavy weighted neutral grip pull-ups or pronated or supinated, you are working your fucking grip, you're working the forearm, you're working the brachialis, the brachialis, the freaking bicep, you're engaging your lats, your middle back, everything is engaged. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that the back exercise would be something, ooh, I need to isolate my, my middle trap. Well, let's get the thing working, right? It's gotta be the best exercise for the back because it's really isolated and then you really feel it. The fuck no. Strength training is quite simple, actually. I've made it very simple right here in this video so all of you can understand. So if, if I'm practicing the bicep curls, that's my main lift. Like I can really improve it in that lift greatly because it's only freaking bicep that's engaged. If I'm doing a weighted chin ups, I'll be able to get stronger way faster. And I already told them what's the third exercise, right? Ooh, okay. So yeah, it's the fucking chin up or the pull up or the neutral grip pull up. That is the best exercise because it's the most amount of range of motion and you can really get stronger there. Do a couple of reps. So neutral grip, for example, would be fantastic because even if your uh, retraction on top is not perfect, it puts the least amount of pressure on your shoulder. Still try to retract basically as much as you can. So again, full range of motion and maximum retraction if you can. And again, try to go as soon as you can, weight it and lift 40, 50 kgs right there, which we explained in the video as well. Me personally, right now I'm focusing on the neutral grip. I really like it. Had some troubles with the pull-ups as well. So I'm gonna focus on the neutral grip, then later on a bit more on the chin-up and later on a bit more on the pull-up as well. So I'm kind of mixing it up, but one variation for a longer period of time. Very, very important. Really learn the movement pattern. Yes, it takes a whole fucking long time, longer than people think. You know, it's easy for me to do a, a chin-up symmetrically with perfect retraction. If I have 50 fucking kgs right here, yeah, that shit gets a bit more difficult. You know, all sorts of shit start to happen. You start to focus a bit more on depression and then you uh, end up having one shoulder in elevation. You tend to focus too much on the arms or on the weight. So you're always perfecting the form and the movement pattern. So that's very important. It's one of the ways to get, one of the things you gotta do to get stronger. So really learn the movement patterns. So focus on one progression at a time. And then the fourth exercise. Regarding the pressing, what's the best exercise? It's gotta be like the, 
one on push up on two hands that Bruce Lee did, right? That's probably, even though that's a very tough progression and Bruce Lee was a very strong guy, but still it's not that. You know, baby, what it is, is the bench press. All right, let's get that. <laughs> I like to make fun of the bench press, you know, it's a, fuck it, you know, uh, sue me. I don't really like the exercise, why? Because it basically requires zero fucking scapula connection strength. You're just lying there ritually with your shoulders freaking retracted like this. The delta is not even working because it's in a weird freaking position. Like the delta will work. Like look at this beautiful contraction, contraction, extension. Boom. So if I'm doing something like the handstand push up or the planche press, it's just beautiful sensation of the delta. I'm doing a retracted press. That's just like what the F is even going on. Even the chest is completely stretched. Like why would you even uh, don't like it? My scapula doesn't like it. My shoulders don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> the exercise is, oh shit, yes, you guessed it, military press, overhead press. Again, neutral bar, I don't, like, whichever one works the best for you, feels the best for your shoulder. I have a lot of students who bought the neutral grip bar just because it feels better on the shoulders. If you're just a beginner, you can use a plate as well. You can use a, let's say, a 10 kg plate or a 20 kg plate. Pascal, my student from, from Switzerland, just started working with 25 kgs overhead press, kind of a neutral grip position, works fantastic. But yeah, barbell would be probably the best choice if it feels comfortable. So breathe in your stomach. And why, why is it the better choice than the bench press? Again, more muscle mass involved through a greater range of motion. As simple as that. That's, that's it. That's all there is to it, baby. So breathe in your stomach. Go underneath the bar. Elbows underneath the bar. Wrists in a good position. Tight glutes. Slight anterior pelvic tilt. Push the bar above the head, directly above the head, not too far back, uh, but not also here. You don't want just your delted working on top. You want the traps engaged right here and the pressure the whole time. Boom. So overhead press is one of the best or the fucking best exercise for strength. Again, some of you might be like, oh, what about the handstand push-up? Yes, true indeed. If your balance is absolutely fantastic on top of this world, then just do the handstand push-ups. If your balance is not good enough, so if you sometimes lose balance in your handstand push-ups, then the balance is the limiting factor, not the force production. So my balance right now is pretty darn good. As soon as I get my military press up to 90 kgs, my body weight, I'm gonna work on the handstand push-up again because my balance is fantastic. I've been working on it for 12 fucking years. There's so many handstand push-up sets you wouldn't believe more than you did pull-ups. So that's why I can do handstand push-ups for strength training. And this is a better choice. That's under the condition that your handstand is fucking phenomenal and you don't lose balance in your handstand push-ups. And uh, your overhead press has to be very fucking high for you to do handstand push-ups for three sets of five reps or four sets of four reps. If you're using military press, doing three sets of five, five sets of five, yeah, that's where it gets really fucking strong and good at handstand push-ups as well. But for strength purposes, you don't have a fantastic handstand and you're an athlete, military press, overhead press, absolute best thing. Regarding, I have to mention this, you know, Dominic, like are all the exercise, accessory exercise complete bullshit that we're doing, all the ring stuff and everything, is that complete bullshit? Absolutely not, absolutely not. If calisthenics is what you want to do, then that's your practice. That's what you're doing strength training for, is to get better at that practice. You know, so it makes sense for you to keep working the rings, uh, keep learning the handstands and do all of that stuff. But your primary set, your primary exercise should be an exercise that's either for upper body, either overhead press or the handstand push-up, if you can do it. A uh, pike push-up, not good enough. Overhead press will get you better and faster strength development. And regarding pulling, if you're not currently doing one arm chin-ups, so if you're not yet strong, make sure to work on the weighted chin-up or the weighted pull-up. If it's not, if I would get here the best climber in the world, uh, who can do a pinky uh, one arm chin-up, and he would say, oh, Dominic, I'm going to Olympics, so what do I gotta do? I would say you do fucking weighted chin-ups. Because even if you're climbing, you're doing stuff, you're doing a lot of unilateral movement, your scapula and neck connection might, might not be perfectly on point. How do you know whether it's on point? You try a fucking 70 kg weighted pull-up and see if it's there. And if right now he can maybe pull 60, we'll get it up to 70. If he can pull 70, we'll get it up to 80, but that's how we get him stronger and that's what you gotta do. Yeah, I'm also gonna give you two secrets. So the two accessory exercises that are most valuable for your time is regarding pulling, the perfect pull-up or the perfect chin-up. So the pull-up where you fully retract, you engage the external rotators, the lats are beautifully engaged. So it's really like the 
it's really how a pull-up should look like. And the second thing for the for the press, that would be, you guessed it, the pseudo planche push-up or even just the protracted push-up. So the push-up where it's capital connection, you see complete protraction all throughout the range of motion. Boom. If you if you're only military pressing all the time, you don't have this, you're doing yourself a disservice. So strong scapula connection means good fucking strength. Weak scapula, shitty strength. Yeah, you guys should be paying me some serious money for me to be giving you all these secrets. Like this and serious shit. Like the top level strength coaches, they see, they see fucking LeBron James train, training like an idiot. And I fucking love LeBron James. And I love all professional athletes. Most of them are training like fucking idiots, which is sad. I wish somebody told me this shit, man, fucking 15 years ago. But this is the most important principles regarding strength training. This is this shit, the Fantastic Four. If your numbers right here are fucking solid, you're fucking strong. If all those numbers are below 50 kgs or a, somewhere around 50 kgs, you're a weak individual, you need to get fucking stronger. Start training correctly. And uh, if you still have some freaking difficulties, then for the love of God, make sure to go on my mentorship, work with me personally, especially if you're an athlete, you want to be at the top of your game, you want to be the best of the best, work with the best. So make sure to click the link right here below the video and schedule a call. And uh, also for everybody watching this video, make sure to join our Facebook group. We have a new Facebook group. We want to create a pleasant, creative, creative? Yeah, creative. also creative environment for everybody supporting each other and growing together. So make sure to click the link and join our group. Fuck yeah, the Fantastic Four.